So scholars have um, looked at Deuteronomy through Kings, and they've seen something that's really there. They, they've seen that a lot of the phrases that start occurring in Deuteronomy are reused all through Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. There's a, just a load of language, uh, terminology, concepts, a fund of, of sort of stock imagery and stock phrases that gets used and reused across these books. That's really there. The question is, how do we explain it? And there, there's a strain of, I would say, unbelieving scholarship that looks at this and, and they explain it essentially as propaganda. They, their, their view is that at the time of Josiah's uh, reformation or renewal or however we want to describe what, what King Josiah did, that um, jo Josiah got people onto this program and then essentially he event invented holy books or, or someone working for him invented a whole set of holy books that served as propaganda because they, they lent uh, ancient legitimating authority to Josiah's program. And these are people that would think that the book of Deuteronomy ought to be dated to that period and then that uh, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings, they were all produced essentially uh, around the time of Josiah uh, in pursuit of his program. That way of looking at the material is basically claiming that the story that is told on the surface of the text is not the real story. The real story is in back of the surface of the text, and, and the surface of the text is just propaganda. And um, I think that's, a, that's a, a skeptical and uncharitable way to approach this material. A better, a, a, a way to approach the material that actually um, abides by and holds to what the texts themselves claim for themselves would be to look at this material and say, well, the book of Deuteronomy claims at a, in a, at a number of places that Moses is responsible for this material. And then these other texts, they all attest to the profound significance of Moses. So I don't think it should surprise us when we find Moses using all this language in Deuteronomy, and then we find these later authors who come after Moses picking up the language and the concepts that, that they learn from Deuteronomy and, and essentially describing the world through what we might call the lens that is ground in the book of Deuteronomy. So that's the way that I would uh, um, explain this material. I think there's a, a better, uh, more biblical way to account for all of this language and imagery that, that derives from Deuteronomy than the Deuteronomistic uh, hypothesis. I think, I think uh, more likely uh, Moses had the profound impact that the texts indicate he had, and then later biblical authors were uh, deeply influenced by the way that he described things.